Welcome to the Agent of Wealth podcast with Mark Boudis from Boudis Financial. In this podcast, Mark helps guide you towards financial freedom, ensure you never run out of money, and create a balance in life that prioritizes what is most important to you. Join us for this journey as Mark draws from years of expertise and guest experts to solve the multiple wealth building challenges involved in your financial life. Welcome back to the Agent of Wealth. This is your host, Mark Bowdis. On today's show, I brought on a special guest, Patty Handy. Patty's a former wealth advisor and mortgage advisor turned financial coach with a passion for serving women. Having gone through a divorce herself, she has firsthand knowledge of the struggles, fears, and emotions that come with that experience. Patty's a certified life coach, certified executive coach, published author of four books, and the brains behind Minding Her Money, a roadmap and training for divorced, widowed, and single women to quickly improve financial confidence. Patty, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Mark. I'm happy to be here. So what was uh, you know, your divorce journey? How did you go from being a divorced single mom to mastering your money? Well, it wasn't an easy linear road. It was a bumpy road, uh, especially early on. Uh, I was divorced when my son was 18 months old, so there was a lot of emotional turmoil. I wasn't in a place you know, in my mind to really um, be making great decisions. I was trying to just uh, stay afloat emotionally and, and focus on my son. So I actually came from a, a family where my mom and dad did teach me about money and I was financially confident and in the marriage I was the one who managed the money and invested the money. And I, I do remember a, a point in time when I was you know, very emotionally distraught and even through that moment I had this, this sort of sense of, you know what, I'm going to be okay. I know how to take care of my son and I. I know how to manage the money. I know how to make the money. I'm going to be okay. And I remember thinking at that time, I want to somehow take this experience someday and turn this around and help others. And that was many, many years ago. I spent, you know, the next 20 something odd years making a living, raising my son, focusing on him, focusing on, on um, just building back, you know, my, my life. And um, went into the mortgage business for, for many years and then became a financial planner, which I really enjoyed. And it was a bumpy road, like I said. Even with the, with the formal education and the, and, the, and the life experience, I still made mistakes. I still had some bumps. And those um, experiences and those bad decisions taught me how to be a better teacher for, <laughs> for, for, for those who are going through this, um, hoping to shortcut the, the, uh, the, the experiences that others you know, go through. But it's always been a passion to really help women through this. Now, a lot of times I, I'll see you know, someone going through a divorce. And, and like you said, you, in your case, you were the one managing the money at that point. And I, I'll see it all different you know, where, where there's one person that's doing it. Sometimes it's the husband, sometimes it's the wife. Do you recommend that's the best approach in the marriage to have one person that does it? Yes, 100%. I feel it should be a mutual experience. I think both husband and wife should, um, or both in the marriage, should absolutely positively um, focus on doing the monies together. Because God forbid something happened to one or the other. And I've had those two where, where a spouse passed away unexpectedly, an accident or something you know happened. And um, the other spouse was left not knowing where accounts were. They didn't know how things were invested. They didn't understand. Um, I mean, I even have run across some individuals who didn't know how to write a check. And it just was, they just never did it. So, um, yes, they absolutely should. I, I encourage couples to have what they call money dates. And, you know, once a, you know, once a quarter, go out, have dinner, and just talk about, okay, how are, are we today? What's going on with our finances? Are we okay with everything? Do we need to reconsider? Um, and not make a big effort out of it. You know, it, it's really just about making it very comfortable and making it so that it's just not a big deal. So that when something does happen in the market or something happens in life and you've got to reconsider where funds go, it's not like, oh my gosh, what do we do? It's like, okay, well, you know, we've we've discussed this, we can handle it, we've got some money set aside or whatever the case may be. Um, but it absolutely, you know, to your point, it should be both in individuals for sure. Yeah, I, I like that concept of the, the money date. And it's not even that the, the person who's less involved has to get more involved in making investments or researching this, but like you, I think you, you said it, phrased it as get, they have to get more comfortable with what's going on. And, you know, in the event something does happen, whether it's a death, a divorce or, or changes, you know, it'll just be easier to, to transition. The other part is, you know, as someone's getting further along a, a divorce, there's the period going through divorce, then there's the post-divorce. 
But the, the period going through the divorce, I've seen people struggle a lot. You know, in, in this same case that you're talking about where there's one person more involved, um, but they're trying to figure out, okay, there's this asset here, this asset here, this asset here. What's, you know, and maybe there's a mediator, maybe there's an attorney involved, and depending upon their level of involvement, they provide some guidance, but maybe not necessarily the full picture of you should look at this part of it, this part. At what point do you come in? Or if not, what should someone going through a divorce or start thinking about in terms of the financial aspect of things? Yeah, there's a lot to that uh, to unpack. There's, you know, certainly the emotional piece of it because you are dealing with just the trauma and the grief of losing this relationship and the, you know, the, the, the life that you had planned. If you have kids, and there's also that component that's coming to the table. Um, and then, of course, the financial piece. And then what do you do with the house? And do, does one person keep the house? And do the kids stay in the school district? And, I mean, there's so many pieces to that to that picture um, to, to unpack. So I think, first and foremost, if the two individuals can stay as friendly as possible and you know, focus on what's best for the kids. If there are kids involved, you know, what's going to make them the most comfortable? What's the least upheaval for, for them? It's already going to be hard for mom and dad to be, you know, separate from each other. So whatever you can do to have the, the, the kids, you know, that, that really should, should be the focus from the emotional standpoint. And as a mom, you know, I can certainly, you know, speak to that. Um, from a financial perspective, it's really important that you, yes, know, you know, where everything is, what, you know, all the assets are, and just sit down. You know, here's the statements, you know, put it on an Excel spreadsheet if you want to keep it simplistic. Here's what we have in assets. Here's the house. Here's the equity in the house. Here's our debts. Here's our, you know, whether it's credit cards or car loans or school loans or whatever it is that you've got going on with, with debts. Um, and just really have a starting point of, of the roadmap. And, um, and if you are in a place where you are comfortable enough going, you know what, I'll take this, you take that, um, and you can just deal with a the mediator, then that's even more beautiful. My, my ex-husband and I were able to we basically do that. We, we agreed upon our assets. We split them all. And we wanted to focus on you know, knowing that um, you know, whatever monies we put towards a divorce attorney, and believe me, divorce attorneys are, are wonderful, and I encourage them. Um, I, I'm just saying that it, in our case, we decided to keep it through a mediator and it was it was simplistic knowing that the funds we would save would go towards our son's college. You know, we just looked at that as a as the end game. But it is very important that you basically understand where you're starting from and then go through those those things that you can split in a, in a perfect world. Obviously, there's going to be different scenarios where um, they aren't, you know, that peaceful and you've got to look at, you know, always, you know, bringing an attorney and, and going through some of that. But just try to stay as unemotional as you can when you're looking at the financial piece. And then where do they start now? The divorce is final. Their assets are split. How do they go from, and you know, the, I see the more common cases, the one where they weren't the ones who were pr the primary, you know, involved in the finances. Um, so there's, like you said, there's an emotional piece to this of, wow, feeling overwhelmed. I'm, I'm the one responsible for everything. And then there's also the, the financial piece. There's been a change in finances, whether it's income change, expenses changed, you know, what they can or can't do financially, you know, how do they kind of piece that together, put together a plan to get moving in the right direction? Yeah, well, you said the perfect world there, put together a plan, and that is really what you have to do. Um, at the time of my divorce, for example, I uh, had left corporate banking and wanted to be at home with my son, so I was unemployed when I got divorced. So I had to figure out a way to get back in the workforce and also raise my son. So I went into a position where it was, you know, all commission, and I worked at home and I had some flexibility. So make that plan. So, I, again, it's kind of like... Starting at the roadmap, starting at the at the starting point. Okay, well, here I am. Do I have a, a job that I like? Do I have a job that's going to afford me to stay in my home or not stay in my home? Take an inventory of what you ended up with in terms of assets and liabilities, and then make a plan for, okay, how am I going to get from point A to point B? I also would encourage, because it's just so overwhelming at that early stage to take it all in, don't try to think about 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Just look at what can I do today to make sure that, you know, the next year is going to be okay. Don't try to project so far in the future because things change. Opportunities will come, you know, available to you that you didn't think about. Be open to the possibilities and the wonderful stuff that's going to be coming to you someday. 
and just look at what's happening in the near future. So you want to take a look at your assets and you go, okay, what part of these assets do I need today? Do I need cash today for an emergency fund? Um, okay, make sure I have that. If I have my retirement accounts, depending upon your age and your risk tolerance, where do you put that? So you want to look at getting that you know, to work for you. If you're in your 30s or 40s and you've got you know, 20, 30 years to go till you're retired, that might be a good opportunity to put, you know, put in the market and let that money work for you. I've seen lots of ladies come in with pretty substantial portfolios sitting in all cash. That's just not a great thing if you're 30 years out from retirement. You're actually losing money to inflation. So that is not the best place. You're making a decision based on fear, and from a financial perspective, that could potentially be very costly to you in the long run. So if you're in a position to meet with a financial advisor, you can certainly meet with a financial advisor, talk to a financial coach, get a handle on what you're doing, and then gain some knowledge. If the financial world isn't your cup of tea and wasn't your strong suit, there's so much, and be careful when I say online, I, I, I'm because there's so much that's online that's just so not right. I read some things, I'm thinking, oh my heavens, why are you out there? But um, yeah, just you know, be careful who you listen to and who you learn from. Do your due diligence. Don't jump into anything that you don't understand. If you're introduced to a product and you can't explain it to a fourth grader, then you probably shouldn't be investing in it because that means you don't fully understand it yourself. And that is what is, you know, sometimes the very costly mistakes. I know people selling some of these products can have very slick sales pitches. Yeah. Aside from what you just said about if you can't explain it to a fourth grader, stay away from it. Is there any, like, I mean, do they look, should they look at the fees on it, the expenses? Is there ways that, uh, different things that they can look at? Or should they maybe do like a, their due diligence include like a, have a second opinion on, you know, to, like you said, reach out to someone, but also have a second opinion too, to, to, because, you know, there's the financial aspect, but emotionally it's, it's challenging because they don't know, are, am I getting good advice from this person? Am I getting good advice from Google? Is, and they're probably getting blasted from all different angles, from all different types of, of people or sources, and it can be overwhelming at times. Yeah, oh, very overwhelming, absolutely. And I think the first and foremost thing, if you are looking at a financial advisor, find somebody that is very, very happy with their financial advisor, get a referral. Don't just Google one in your area. Find somebody in your, in your very close network of friends or family that is working with somebody that speaks highly of their advisor. Ideally, you'd work with a fiduciary advisor, which is one that um, is obligated by law to work in your best interest as the client. I mean, every advisor should obviously work in the client's best interest. In my personal opinion, I think it makes the most sense to work with a, uh, an advisor that is fee-based, meaning that their fees are based on the assets that they manage versus a commissioned product-based advisor where they get paid a commission on the products that they sell you. Those that are fee-based, they are simply managing your money, and the more money they make for you, the more money they make. So it's a win-win for everybody. One that also does tax planning, tax strategies, and they not just about, you know, give me your money and I'll invest it for you. It's, it's like, what else are you going to help me with? What, what else can you, you know, guide me with? You know, should I be doing a Roth IRA today? Or should I be doing, doing tax loss harvesting? Should I, you know, let, let them help you with these different variations of your financial house, if you will. You, you had mentioned that the focus initially should be on what it sounds like the short term. So, um, you know, not so much the 10 years down the road, but 10 years down the road is probably at some point important too. At, at what position or what time do they kind of not transition their thinking, but also include thinking further down the road than just the, all right, let's survive, let's get back on my feet and let's focus on the short term. But now let's start incorporating some of the more longer term things that are going on. Yeah, it's going to be individual, I think. To make that decision, to really have a concrete plan, you've got to get past the emotional devastation. You've got to get past the, um, you've just got to get back on your feet. You've, you've got to be back, for lack of better words, you know, upright. You know, I know when, when, in my divorce, it was probably six months before I saw through the, the haze of, oh my gosh, what just happened? And I've got a son to raise and, you know, just, I got to find a job and how am I going to keep the house? And I mean, all this stuff that you're going through, 
so it isn't the best time to go, okay, I'm going to go put my money in this, you know, fund and I'm going to go invest in this particular international market or, you know, you just, you just want a place to think like that, but you do have to, to your point, you, you do have to go, okay, I've got to get back on track now. I've got to absolutely start thinking long-term. I've got to put my money to work in the market or put my money into bonds or whatever it is you're going to do. You've got to have that plan. So it's going to be personal and it depends on your situation. I've, I've had some conversations with individuals who their divorce is, you know, going on three, four years. It's still not final. And they're just going through this crazy maze and they're going through attorney's fees like nuts. And, and, and then there's some that just they're done with it in six months or whatever the term is legally that they can get in and out. And they just go about their merry way and, they, you know, they're back on their feet in several months because it's very peaceful and, and it, it wasn't that experience. So it's a very personal, I guess my, my, my response to that would be it's a very personal thing. But yes, as soon as you're able to think rationally, make good decisions, have somebody helping you, trust your intuition because your, your gut is very strong and, and your intuition is very strong. If something feels and sounds a little just off, then don't do it. Don't be forced into something that you're not comfortable with. Um, if you've got this little voice telling you, no, you know what, I think I'm going to just not do this. I'm going to wait. Like I said, it's very individual, but as soon as you can, yes, you've, you've got to get on a, a plan and get yourself on track. In, in your personal situation, what made you decide to go from being a wealth advisor, mortgage advisor, and then into being a financial coach for women? There, there was many moving parts to that. Part of that was, like I mentioned at the, the very beginning, was the, the story of my own divorce and knowing, knowing that I wanted to take this experience and somehow serve women in this in this you know, capacity. Um, and that's been on my heart for, you know, 20 years, 20 plus years. The conversations that I had with women working as a mortgage advisor and then as a financial advisor, the number of conversations I've had with women in tears and emotionally distraught, it was very clear to me that there was a lot of embarrassment, overwhelm, shame, fear. And as an advisor, a lot of times there's a minimum as far as assets. And if we couldn't help that individual, we basically had to guide them, so I would guide them into you know a, a path of where where to follow. Um, but I couldn't give financial advice, and I just I always felt horrible after the conversation, thinking, oh my gosh, this poor woman needs somebody to help them, and I you know I, I can't do that in this in the role as a financial advisor. So I did this pivot. It's, it's a leap of faith. I'm doing it a little later in life, but I feel this calling, and I I I, I feel very aligned with what I'm meant to do in life and all of my experience, all the education that I had through the mortgage world and the financial world and the, and just going through my own divorce. Um, it's all, you know, culminated, so to speak to this place and time where I'm like, okay, now it's, now it's time. Hmm. When you engage with someone, do you get involved as the divorce is going on post divorce uh, or it could be either? Typically, it's going to be post-divorce. Um, oftentimes, when it's the divorce is still happening, there's still a lot of unknowns with regards to assets, with regards to uh, there's a lot of emotions going on. So typically, I am, you know, in, in, the, in the coaching world, we talk about coaching being about taking your situation from today moving forward and stepping into your greatness moving forward. And therapy is more about your situation now and, and back and looking at your past and helping heal some of those issues from the past. So as a financial coach and life coach, I, I'm really more focused on today moving forward. That will normally happen in a situation where it's post-divorce. If, if somebody calls me and they're going through a divorce and it's one of those where the divorce is, you know, three, four years long and they still just haven't gotten anywhere, I can certainly help them because much of my program that I offer is not only investment focused, but it's, there's other areas and components that address the, uh, the the financial house of a, of a woman. Is the engagement like ongoing or does someone eventually, let's say, graduate and, you know, they're back on their feet and they got their plan? Well, in the, uh, the, the program that I offer is a 90-day program. My goal and the transformation that women are going to have are going through this program after 90 days. They're in a place where they have the financial confidence. They know the steps to take in these various arenas of, of their world. And, yeah, they don't need me anymore. Um, I don't want them to need me anymore. I want them to be able to go out and feel confident. Um, now, not to say that down the road I might offer a program when we have a retreat or a VIP day or something where they can come back and get a, a tune-up, if you will, and stay in touch. But at this point, my, my program is a 90-day program. 
um, where we go through these nine areas of their life and work through these and have group coaching and individual coaching. But yeah, as, as a coach, I do my job best when someone doesn't need me anymore. Yeah. What are some of the other areas that you help with in addition to the financial aspect? Because I know it's, it's a big life change for, for people and there's obviously a lot of things going on. Absolutely. So we start off with, with self-care. Um, and really, and I, I know that's a big word, and it's a word that's sort of thrown around these days very flippantly, but really it's about getting back to yourself and getting grounded. And like I said earlier, just getting upright again and whatever that looks like for you. So we talk about what it is that, that we do, you know, whether it's meditation or exercise or eating or you know, friends, family, whatever it is that we do to get ourselves back on, on track, self-care. Then we go into our money story and understanding our limiting beliefs around money. And there's a, a such a huge component there that we often overlook because our external current situation is 95% run by our subconscious mind and only 5% run by our conscious mind and the power of the mind. And we go deep into that piece of it, um, getting organized, getting yourself you know, getting all your documents and your and your things in order. We talk about getting out of debt, getting you know, on a, on a, I don't like the word budget, but we get you know aware of what what we're what we're spending and and how to you know be mindful of of some of those habits that we have, uh, whether it's emotional spending, and then again, depending upon their situation, if there's a need for a potential side gig to bring in some some more cash. Um, we talk about credit, getting yourself back on track from your, your credit perspective and, and getting your credit built back up if that's necessary. Um, if you are buying a house on your own or you are looking at refinancing a home because the spouse has to come off, um, I help you uh, with, with that component and teach you the, the lingo and teach you the, the, the ways of that. Oftentimes when you're dealing with a mortgage advisor, um, you know, they're looking at the, the actual transaction where a, a uh, independent third person can give you some of the questions to ask and to look for and to, to watch for. Um, and then we talk about, of course, the investing. We get into some tax strategies and then your retirement, um, living a legacy that you are happy with um, and a retirement that you're happy with. So those that are entering into the retirement years, um, you know, being purposeful and having those joyful years. Um, so that's that's really kind of the, a quick overview of, of the program. Um, it's very comprehensive. Um, there's an online curriculum, a, a course that they go through, um, coupled with the weekly uh, group coaching calls. That program is called Minding Her Money. And do they have, as, as they're going through the program, do they have homework on their side where they have to either, like you said, budget, it's a rough word to use, yeah. but do they have to go and figure out, okay, this is where my money, now that I am divorced and things are different, this is where my money is going, and then figure out, is it going to the right place or... Yes, absolutely. There is homework on each module and there is, um, you don't have to turn it into me, but it is of conversation. I mean, it's really in their best interest to, to do this. Um, but yes, I mean, I have some uh, uploads of like a spending tracker to use and, and you know, budget uh, documents. So yes, there is some of that into the, into the program. And then when we have our one-on-one, -on -one, part of the program, they have two one-on-ones with me over this 90 days. So um, they're able to, you know, dive deeper. We're diving deeper into their personal situation, whether it's a, a lot of credit card debt or they're, you know, they're sitting on these large assets that were split and now I need to know where to, what to do with it. Again, it's just very individual. Yeah. Well, that just about wraps up today's episode. Patty, I'd like to thank you for being on the show. You gave some great advice on how someone can uh, get back on their feet and going through a divorce. How best can someone reach out to you and find out more about what you do? Yeah, the best way would be to visit my website, and it's uh, simply my name. It's pattyhandy.com. It's P-A-T-T-I-H-A-N-D-Y.com. And then you click on the Minding Her Money link, and that'll take you to a page where you can uh, download the roadmap of the program that I offer and then book a call with me where I can then learn about, uh, about you and, and your situation and see if the program is a fit for you. Perfect. We'll link to that in the show notes. Thanks again, and thank you everyone for tuning in today. Don't forget to follow the Agent of Wealth on the platform you listen from and leave us a review of the show. We're currently accepting new clients, and if you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with our advisors, please do so at boutisfinancial.com backslash call. Thank you for listening to the Agent of Wealth podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. 
The information covered represents the views and opinions of the guests and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Boutis Financial. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be a substitute for professional financial planning and investment advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investments and financial planning.